Can hypertension be cured? What is a normal blood pressure and do you know your numbers? Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Musa Mtombeni. Signing with us today is Tsepo Maseko and the feeder interpreter is Ntabi Singh Nkofu. World Hypertension Day is celebrated annually on the 17th of May. The main aim of this day is to highlight the low hypertension awareness rates worldwide, to promote accurate blood pressure measurement methods and to emphasize the importance of improving hypertension control to live longer and healthier. The theme for this year's is measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. On Vital Signs, we focus on hypertension, which is commonly known as higher blood pressure. And coming up on the program, Zama Butelez, the producer, spoke to a nurse at the Chris Hani Baragwanath Cardiology Unit about the silent killer and also spoke to three young people living with hypertension. We'll speak to a cardiologist about hypertension and hypertensive heart disease and we'll speak to a health promotions officer from the Heart and Stroke Foundation South Africa about what they're doing this month in terms of awareness about hypertension. If you would like to be part of our show and ask the guests that we'll have on any questions that you have in your mind or simply share your view with us on what we're discussing today, the number to call is 011-714-5861 or 011-714-5877. On social media, we're also available. Share your thoughts with us there on Twitter at SABC Vital Signs or Facebook SABC Vital Signs. We'll continue with our show after the sad break. back to vital signs. I'm Dr. Musa and today we're talking about hypertension. Now high blood pressure often has no symptoms. Over time, if untreated, it can cause health conditions such as heart disease as well as strokes. According to experts, eating a healthier diet with less salt, exercising regularly and taking medication can help lower your blood pressure. As the walk commemorates Hypertension Day, Vital Science producer Zama Butelezi spoke to a nurse, Constance Krolani, the operational manager of the cardiology unit at Krishani Barakwanath the academic hospital about the silent killer. Let's take a listen to the interview. Hypertension is one of the predominant risk factors for the development of several cardiovascular diseases such as coronary artery disease. Sister Constance Tlolane, who is the operational manager cardiology unit at Chris Hani Baragwanath Hospital, talks to us about the prevalence of hypertension, looking at the patients that they see daily in her unit. In our facility, the uh, hypertension is very common in our patients. We see about 80 to, 7, um, 80 to 90 percent of uh, uh, hypertensive patients. Sister Tlolane talks to us about the genders and ages of the patients that they see daily at the cardio unit. We're seeing uh, uh, patients uh, from 40 years of age to 70 percent of age, fem with females being from 40 to 60 plus and males from 50 to 70 uh, years of age. And with uh, younger patients, we, uh, it's, it's a minority, we don't see much of that pa the patients, but we do have that uh, low numbers of hypertensive patients which are young. But what are the most common risk factors? The cause is not yet known, but there are predisposing factors like uh, eating too much salt, lack of exercising, obesity, like drinking too much caffeine and uh, too much alcohol intake and cigarette smoking and also like uh, sleep disturbances can also cause hypertensive in some patients. Many pregnant women have developed hypertension. How prevalent is hypertension in pregnancy looking at the patients seen at Chris Hani Baragwanath Academic Hospital? Some uh, patients develop gestational hypertension during pregnancy, but it, it, uh, you know they uh, get that during their first um, their first their second trimester to third trimester. And after that, after delivery, 6 to 12 weeks after that, it sometimes normalizes. But so with, some of, with some of them, it goes on and on, and they need to be monitored and give, given treatment for them to be 
for their hypertension to be controlled, but they do get that uh, uh, hypertension during pregnancy. As we commemorate World Hypertension Day, how important is screening? Screening for hypertension is very important. Uh, most patients or most patients or people from uh, home, they, are, they need to be encouraged to go to a clinic for screening because in our institution we don't add, like screen for patients with hypertension, but they are being transferred from the clinics or the medical outpatients department to us. But it is very, very important for uh, the community to go and screen for, hypertensive, for hypertension as we know that hypertension is a silent killer. When should people start screening? When people have signs like uh, severe headaches that uh, do not go away, that that's, doesn't do not fade away, and they are sometimes uh, tired or they have sleepless nights or they are stressed, they need to worry and go and screen for hypertension because those might be the signs of them having uh, high blood pressures. Is hypertension hereditary? Yes, it is hereditary. Most patients uh, inherited hypertension from the close relatives that uh, had hypertension before or that they still have uh, hypertension. COVID-19 has seen many people defaulting on treatment, fearing contracting COVID in health facilities. Is it the case with Tlolane's unit? There are a few a number of patients that default and they come back to hospital being worse. But most of our patients are compliant and we most of the time in our uh, hypertension, hypertension clinics give them the numbers to call when they are in, unable to come. And they call so that we can rebook them for the next visit. So it, it, it's, it's improving. After the break, we'll speak to Dr. Musa Maya Yese, a cardiologist, about hypertension. Stay with us. Welcome back to Vital Science. The importance of World Hypertension Day is to raise awareness and knowledge about the need to know of one's blood pressure. Now, it is important to measure your blood pressure correctly and accurately and to know your blood pressure status and control it by taking your medication to live longer, even if you are hypertensive. Now, it is believed that hypertension affects all people. But research shows a different picture. Let's listen to the stories of young patients at Chris Honey Barrack Wanneth Soweto living with silent killer that is hypertension. My name is Zintla Baloy. I'm 23. I was diagnosed last year in May with uh, high blood. I found out when I came here for my diabetes appointment, I didn't have any symptoms. So I was uh, put in treatment of um, Amlock and Reduc. So the medication works because my headache goes away. When I have I experience a severe headache, I know I know that my high blood is high. So when I take my treatment, the headache goes away. So yeah, it has been working since till now. My name is Teacher Stolle. I'm from Van der Beel, and I am 22 years of old. With me, um, what happened? Um, I used to come here on my regular checkup. Yes, and. When I was being uh, screened and stuff, they would see that my high blood pressure is high. And they would ask them, do you have high blood pressure or do you take any medication for high blood pressure? So I'd be confused and be like, no, I don't have any high blood. And they'd be like, okay, why is your high blood pressure forever high? And I'd be like, I don't know. Okay, then one time goes, they say, okay, no. Due to the medication that you've been taking, we think it, one of the side effects, it's a hypertension. So we think that is what caused it. And then that's when I started um, getting the AMLOC, yes, whereby I take um, 10 milligrams each and every day and stuff. But um, do they work? I don't know because um, I take a um, lot of medication. So because um, I don't have any symptoms, I don't know um, what's happening. So, but um, one thing that I can say is that um, when I come on my regular checkups, sometimes it's a bit high, sometimes a bit low and stuff. So that's whereby I can say, okay, no, it's working, no, it's not working. My name is Nontlan Tlamake. I am 37 years of age. I am from Dobsonville. I do come from a family of history of hypertension. I started finding out that I have hypertension in 2016 
when I went to the clinic to get medication for my prevention, they did a test and found out, and then that's when I got, that's when I found out that I have hypertension. I started taking medication. I take a Redac and Amlodrofen, of which it does work. It controls the high blood and does have side effects because when I take the medication every day, I do shake a lot. So I just take the medication because it helps. High blood pressure rates in Africa have climbed by more than 30% in the last decade, with the continent now being the center of the disease. Now, the latest South African National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey shows that 9 in 10 hypertensive adults go unscreened, undiagnosed, and untreated. Now, high blood pressure is the single biggest cause of premature death globally, and because it typically shows no symptoms until it's too late. Adults are being encouraged to go get themselves screened this Heart Awareness Month, and we'll speak to cardiologist Dr. Musa Mayayise, who joins us via Zoom to educate us about hypertension. Good day, Doc. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Musa Tembeni, and the award-winning production team. You know, given the insights that they've been putting there, I think I, I know why. You're very, very right, very Dr. Musa. Way. Dr. Musa, you're very right. We are award-winning, but that's not the point of our discussion today. Let's look at yes. this idea of hypertension. That's what we're talking about. Let's remove the word hypertension, actually, and say high blood pressure so that everyone at home can actually yes. understand what we're talking about. So what do you mean as a cardiologist, and what should we know when someone says they've got high blood pressure? All right. So I missed something a little bit, but you wanted to talk about high blood pressure. So the concepts of blood pressure... Is a pressure that rightfully said in one of the insects we measure on the upper arm of the uh, of the arm, and then we are looking for the upper number, which is a what is called the blood pressure. So the blood pressure will go up, up, up at the highest, it's called systolic. It goes low, low, low at the lowest, it's called diastolic. So the upper number, if it goes, if it's below 120, it's normal. The lower number, which is diastolic, if it's below 80, it's normal. And then. Uh, so blood pressure of 120 over 80 is normal. And mm. then the, once it goes above 140, the, upper, uh, the systolic and the diastolic goes above 90. That mm. is hypertensive. So that what, that's when it becomes problematic because blood pressure is good for pushing blood forward so that it can be able to reach organs and so on. But when it starts to go up, that's when we start having problems because the blood vessels are starting to feel pressure. I gave an, an, an example of a balloon. And when we start inflating the balloon, we start, the wall of the balloon starts to feel pressure until such time that the pressure is too much and the balloon bursts. Mm -hmm. So that's the same concept that happens to the blood vessels. That's the same concept that happens to the organs due to blood pressure, which is why we need to be able to pick it up early. Mm. The big thing about hypertension or high blood pressure, as we're talking about it, is that most of the time people don't know the symptoms in the sense that you don't feel anything. So, for instance, if I walk around without wearing any shoes and I step on a piece of glass, I will immediately know that I've stepped on a piece of glass, which is different for hypertension or high blood pressure because most of the time people don't know. That's why it's called the silent killer. Why, why do you guys call it the silent killer? Yes, uh, this is... The, more, the most crucial part of hypertension. So I think uh, it's just recently this week, I heard that guy, Tony Dalby, who says the most difficult part about hypertension is that somebody doesn't have symptoms, and then when you give them drugs, it's difficult to make them feel better, which is what it creates all our problems in treating high blood pressure. Mm. So it's a silent killer because the blood pressure goes up, it starts to cause damage to the blood vessels, damage to the organs, slowly, 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 with somebody feeling nothing at that point. Mm. And then some people are even shocked. When you told you about kidney failure, but you felt nothing. You got heart failure, you felt nothing. So until the point comes when a certain blood vessels either blocks or it bursts, and then the patient comes. So the patient is going to, if it's a, in the brain, then the patient comes with strokes. If it's in the heart, the patient comes with heart failure, heart attacks, kidneys, kidney failure, and then the, the legs, they can have gangrenes and so on. And then the males can even have erectile dysfunction. And then you find that that's the point where they go and get symptoms. So it's not true that one must wait for symptoms because by then, when you come with strokes and so on, it's normally called that it's too late. Mm. We have missed the ball. 
Mm. And we want to prevent that from happening. So that's why we want to treat it before we get to get complications, before we get symptoms. So we don't want to wait for symptoms before we can actually test. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why it's a silent killer, because it causes a lot of damage before somebody comes in any way with a problem. Mm. Let's talk around the causes of hypertension and high blood pressure. What causes all of this to happen? So I think you've explained, you know, how we get there in terms of, you know, the vessels, they start to thicken, they start to block up, they cause damage, and you may have complications. And I think we'll also address those a little bit later on. But what causes all of this to happen? So I think from the causes, there are what is called non-modifiable causes, uh, things like genetics, if your your parents had it and then you got it, so that is inheritance, but not, nothing much you can do. Things like age, the older you go, you grow, then the systems are not able to regulate the blood pressure very well, then that's why you're likely to get it. And then there is these other causes that are much more modifiable, what's called environmental factors. Things like diet, you know, what you eat, if you're not eating unhealthy, then you can, things like lifestyle. If you're not exercising, you're just sitting and watching TV. If you are not uh, uh, really looking, looking looking after yourself in that way, you're not eating healthy, you're not uh, exercising, then that also is a contributor. Stress is another contributor. And then we get to the eating diet. If, you, if, if you're adding a lot of salt in your food, uh, that also causes. And then I also need to qualify that even if the salt has a fancy name and it comes in a colorful package, it still solves, it can still cause problems. Mm. And then uh, excessive alcohol consumption, that also is a problem when it comes to high blood pressure. So those are some of the contributing factors. And then we've got secondary causes. Normally, the majority of them has to do with uh, different kidney problems and different problems of the hormones that are coming from the adrenal gland. Mm. So those are normally what we're going to investigate when we're looking for secondary causes of hypertension. Majority are a mix of what we said, uh, the genetics, the lifestyle, the, the environment, and also the, 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 the other issues if you are on certain drugs that may cause hypertension. Mm. So those are normally the causes that we do have. And in your insert there, you showed young people who come with hypertension. Some mm -hmm. of them, they do have none, no, no cause when we check. And then it's, it's normally those environmental causes that we, we were explaining now. And then we can also have the secondary one. The age is true, has dropped. It, 10 years, 15 years ago, if you come in your 20s, you've got high blood pressure, we're gonna go all out full blown to investigate for secondary causes. Right now, we see high school kids, at the age of 16, at the age of 18, coming with high blood pressures that are, some of them are even difficult to control. You know? So, and that also creates a little bit of a problem because if you, I'm young and I feel well, then I don't need to take treatment and then they get complications quite easy. So what is the solution to all of this with respect to finding the people that actually have hypertension? Because the big issue, and I think we've highlighted it so far, is that a lot of people won't know they have high blood pressure until something happens. So what solution is there to make sure that we find out people actually realize they've got high blood pressure? So one of the issues is, 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 is like now the World Hypertension Society and the South African Society, uh, Hypertension Society have decided that it is month in May is going to be May, the May measurement month. Yesterday on the 17th, it was a hypertension day. So we try and at least raise awareness, try and pick up as more people as possible to, 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 to test blood pressure. And then people also are encouraged, at least once a year, go get your blood pressure measurement measured. At work, there are opportunity situation, wellness days, where people come, go, and then they get their blood pressure measured. And then... And when they go see doctors, doctors also try to take opportunities. They do what is called opportunistic blood pressure measurement. So that is what needs to be done. And the best is when it's done when a person is not sick. Because what we want is actually a blood pressure when a person is relaxed. Because when you're stressed, your blood pressure is high. Whether you've got pain or you've got headache or whatever, your blood pressure will be high and we might end up over-treating and over-diagnosing. But we want it actually when you are much more at your most relaxed. That's the blood pressure that you are looking at. And then you need to go, when you're well, go get your blood pressure, go get your blood pressure checked regularly, and then we go and, and then we we'll continue to measure it like that. Mm. So that's what this is about. Because at the core of it, worldwide, is half a billion people, that's a big statistic, half a billion people 
who are hypertensive who don't know about it. In mm. South Africa, all the hypertensive that we have, 50%, half of the hypertensives, they don't know about it and are not on treatment. Of those who are on treatment, half of them, they are not controlled. So it's, a, it's, a, it's all these numbers that we're trying to bring them down, treat hypertension early, and then get people controlled, and then we start increasing the numbers of those who are on treatment, increase the numbers of those who are controlled. That way we prevent complications and we lessen the burden of the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got Anna from Limpopo. Anna, hello. Hello. How are you, ma? I'm How are you, Dr. Musa Maise Irimam? Sorry? How are you, Dr. Musa Maise Irimam? Sorry? I've got hypertension since 2013, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not a I don't understand it. I'm on medication. I don't understand it. I'm a fast food. Do you want to check out my blood pressure? Wow, I check out the monkey. I'm a I'm a How with blood pressure? It was 140 over 90. 140 over 90. All right. Get a Okay, ma'am. Mm. All right, Ralebo. So that's Anna from Limpopo basically highlighting something saying that she was diagnosed with hypertension in 2013 and recently she started getting headaches, she's uh, feeling uh, palpitations, things such as that, although she measures a normal blood pressure with her home measuring kit. How do we go around assessing what's going on with Anna? I think uh, she's complaining of the symptom of headache. It normally is a complicated story. It can be as a result of high blood pressure, or it can be the reason why the blood pressure is high. If you're in pain, you are, you've got stress, and then the blood pressure goes up. So it's not really a very, uh, it's difficult to ascertain whether the hypertension is coming from there, or the, the headache is coming from there or not. And then uh, the one good thing from her story is that she's measuring blood pressure. What I would advise and encourage is that you need to measure it much more regularly, especially when you've got problems. Then you need to start increasing the frequency of your measuring maybe every day, and then you try to see what it is that is happening, what is the trend, you know? So you don't measure well, only when you're headache because you might get misleading reading. And then secondly, if she's not uh, being controlled, then you, you need to go see the doctor. And then she's mentioning that her blood pressure is 140 over 90. Normally, that's the first target that we try to get to reduce the blood pressure to below 140 over 90. And then when you are younger and then you don't have complications, and then we can try to reach for lower targets. So what I will uh, I'd advise her is for her to go and consult. And then what is important will be to look for uh, early complications. Like we do ECGs on our side. We were talking about echoes earlier on. We can take screen for heart problems and, 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 and those things. They can easily do blood tests, urine tests to check for kidney problems. So she can be screened for, for complications. Then the, the, the treatment can be tailored mm. towards what is wrong with it. Mm. So that's what I'll advise. So you'll need to see somebody, obviously. All right. Thanks, Doc. There's another caller, Snellizu, from the Eastern Cape. Snellizu, good day. Good day, sir. How are you? Good. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. Lovely. What's uh, your question? I, I, I need to clarify. I have a BP. Okay. I'm on treatment. Mm. It started when I was pregnant, my first child, 2009, mm. during my pregnancy. Then it disappeared after I gave birth. Mm. Then on 2019 August, I was having a severe headache where I couldn't sleep. I went to the doctor. They said my BP is too high. Maybe something that is stressing me. I was on treatment for a few days, and since then, it's on and off, on and off. Mm. Now I'm four months pregnant. It came back again, then I was admitted in hospital. So I don't know whether it's because of I'm stressed or I need to be on chronic. Lovely. I'll pass that message on, and of course, Dr. Maya Yise will answer that question a little bit later on. We will be going for an ad break, but siyabonga fumbuzo wako suzo pendula later, okay, ma? Lovely. All right, that is Vital Signs. We continue our discussion after this.
Welcome back to e Vital Science. I'm trying to see cool among hypertension, a high high, EPP, and hypertension is an enormous health burden and the main risk factor for deaths globally. Now, the continuing rise of smoking behaviors will inevitably lead to a further increase in hypertension prevalence, with many young people, especially uh, the very young ones, starting to get into smoking using vaping machines or e-cigarettes. The Heart and Stroke Foundation warns about the relation of these to hypertension. Let's welcome Samu Lala, who is the health promotions officer and does promotions work at the Heart and Stroke Foundation to talk about what they're doing this month in terms of awareness about hypertension. Samu, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's jump right into it. Hypertension. And I think you guys want to highlight the big thing, which is the vaping component. But I think we'll get into that a little bit later on. We celebrated and commemorated uh, World Hypertension Day yesterday. And today is part of the month of May where we look at hypertensive disease uh, and I guess the heart in general. What plans does the Heart and Stroke Foundation have planned for the month? Um, firstly, good morning to you and the viewers. Um, we, we planned in um, having various um, activations in the communities because the aim is to enforce the information about hypertension. Mm -hmm. Is we believe that 80% uh, of uh, um, those comorbidities can be prevented, and only that 20% 20, uh, 20 that we struggle with. But it is basically where uh, the Heart and Stroke Foundation South Africa will be going out. Um, uh, and reinforcing the, meta, uh, the, the, the matter into the public and also getting them to check their vital signs as um, just to know their numbers mm. briefly. So a lot of people say know your numbers. For the man at home or the woman at home sitting, wondering what numbers exactly you're talking, is this a cell phone number? What numbers specifically are you looking for them to know? Uh, you know, we say people need to know their numbers because... It, it's very much important to know if you do have uh, hypertension or not, so that you can uh, detect and uh, maybe um, get an achievement. Because if you're not checking and know your numbers, then you won't know if there are some uh, abnormalities in your vital signs. Mm. You talk about knowing your numbers, and of course, this preempts people going out to go get screening done on themselves to see if they do have hypertension or not. Where and how can people get screened? Um, we do have uh, branches that I am in Deben, but we do have another another branches in um, in another provinces like in Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, Gabeja in PE, Eastern Cape. So we, we we have health promotions officers like myself where we go out to the communities and offer this uh, services of taking uh, blood pressure. Uh, sugar and also cholesterol. Mm. We do doing this free of charge, of mm. course. So the big myth that is very, very old is that hypertension is a disease of old people. I think this has been something that a lot of people have known. You know, your grandmother saying only high blood is something that you never thought as a young person could potentially affect you. So what is contributing to the high numbers of young people that we're finding to have high blood pressure? You, you, you'll find young people very in denial, as you said. They, they will look uh, very healthy, but at the same time, even if you can look very healthy, you need to check because there is no other way that you can detect whether you do have uh, this hypertensive diseases or not. Mm. So um, we encourage them to go and test so that they will know and then they will adhere to the medication if need be. Um, this uh, has nothing to do with age, but it has a lot more to do with um, your lifestyle. And uh, we also believe that it is uh, familiar, so you can inherit it. If somebody in your family had it, you're most likely to have it. Mm. So it's very much important for people to take this opportunity and get their uh, blood pressure test. Mm -hmm. So you speak... It, is also, yeah. called, it is also called a, a silent killer mm -hmm. simply because there are no signs or any symptoms that will say definitely you do have this uh, hypertensive mm. disease. But it, it's better for you to just uh, get it checked. That's the only way. 
The issue of lifestyle is one that's brought up a lot of the time. A lot of people at home hear this a lot, eat healthy, reg regularly exercise, you know, don't smoke, don't drink too much and things such as that. Why is lifestyle yeah. so important in not only acquiring the disease, but also preventing the complications of disease? It, it is very much important because it has an effect in our lives. Um, we, we need to we need to be very careful when it comes to uh, lifestyle, because it, it, if your lifestyle is not healthy, and then definitely you are not healthy as well. So we encourage people to um, be strict on their diets. Uh, when it comes to diets, you need to um, you need to know how to cook your food very healthy. You need to understand why you're taking this when you're taking. You need to know why you're taking it or, or how is it helping you because it's no use taking um, uh, I, I want to say um, junk food other than healthier stuff because you know in the long run this will have a bad effect in your life. Mm. So we encourage people to, to live a very uh, very healthy lifestyle and also do some exercises just to prevent because uh, the, the, the aim here is to prevent uh, 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 um, and not to like, you know, um, taking those medication and all that. Mm -hmm. But if you can prevent and then you, you, you'll see you live a normal and a very healthy life. Mm. Let's speak about smoking. I think one of the highlights that you're going after with respect to this month is the issue of vaping and e-cigarettes amongst young people and that potentially contributing to the high number of young people now being diagnosed with hypertension. What is the link between the two and why do you, as the Heart and Stroke Foundation, apologies, uh, find it important to highlight this correlation? First, we need to understand um, that what is meant by vaping, and that is the electronic cigarette. So vaping is an act of inhaling aerosols and often referred to as vapor. This is produced by an e-cigarette or a similar device. So mm. people need to know about this. Mm. The authors of our 2019 review um, point out that liquid aerosol contains amma particles. So oxidizing agent and nicotine, which is dangerously um, damage your lungs. Um, a puff from an e-cigarette triggers an increase uh, of heart rate rate, and then um, pressure, which could lead to a heart attack strokes in the end. So according to uh, the research users of any drug-related substances can lead to heart attack and coronary artery disease. So um, it can also lead to eat depression and, and, and anxiety. So we need to be very careful about the mistake. Yeah, we need to be very careful. Thank you so much for chatting to us and highlighting what the Heart and Stroke Foundation will be doing uh, with respect to activities for the month, the importance of going out and, you know, screening and, of course, looking at ideas of making sure that we prevent what we can prevent. That, of course, is Samu Lada from the Heart and Stroke Foundation, South Africa. We continue our discussion with Dr. Maya Yise after the ad break. This is Vital Science. Welcome back to Vital Signs. high blood pressure. Now, hypertensive heart disease can happen if you have a high blood pressure for a very long time, but don't control it. Then, added strain, and of course, the added strain on your heart can lead to heart failure and other health problems. Therefore, it's important to know if you have high blood pressure so that you can treat it when you know. And our lifestyle changes can make your heart healthier too. We're speaking to cardiologist Dr. Mosa Mayayese. He joins us via Zoom to educate us about hypertensive heart disease. Now, before we went to Abrek and before we spoke to the Heart uh, and Stroke Foundation, a question from Sne in the Eastern Cape came where she was asking about the difference or if there is a difference between this pregnancy-induced hypertension, so when you get high blood pressure when you're pregnant only, and then chronic hypertension as well. Doc, can you give us an answer to this, please? Yes, uh, there is a difference. Pregnancy-induced hypertension comes only with the pregnancy, and then when the pregnancy is done, the baby has been delivered, the patient recovers completely. Mm -hmm. And then whilst chronic hypertension, it either can come before pregnancy and then continues in pregnancy, and then sometimes it starts in pregnancy and then it continues after delivery of the baby. So that is chronic hypertension. But for SNE, in particular, she don't need to get assessed by 
especially in obstetrician, very, very urgently because there are different grades of this pregnancy induced hypertension, and the worst of it is what is called preeclampsia, which can be deadly to the mother and the baby. Mm. So she'll need to get that checked out quickly. Mm. Very important, Ligesne. I hope with Zulege and, of course, Umbuzo, Sugu, answer Lewona. Very important to go and speak to the people that you're seeing. Like, in the way, we obstetrician and gynecologist. We have a lot of people who are right. A high blood pressure is in general. We have a lot of people who are in general. We have a pre-eclampsia. All right, we continue our discussion talking about hypertensive heart disease. Is there a difference between hypertension and hypertensive heart disease? And how are the two linked, Doc? Yes, there is a difference. So when you get hypertension, your blood vessels and the heart are under pressure immediately. But slowly, slowly, they start to have some changes. So we get to that certain point where the heart muscles start to get a little bit uh, thicker and a little bit, the heart becomes a little bit heavier. That is what is called a hypertrophy. So, and then uh, if that is not controlled, that's not dealt with, then the heart can go to the point where it gets to heart failure. And heart failure doesn't matter whether the heart is weak in pumping or whether the, 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 the muscle is just too thick that it doesn't uh, uh, allow for blood to go in. So it can, it can have those different types of blood of heart failures, but that is the progression of heart failure. And then it also contributes to damage to blood vessels. Okay. And then if the damage of the blood vessels of the heart are involved, you can get at worst if one of the blood vessels block completely, then it can get a heart attack. Mm. And then that can lead to heart failure and that can lead to death. So, so that is why it is important to treat any. So we speak a lot about damage to the heart as well as damage to the blood vessels, but what does damage to blood vessels actually look like? What does it mean? And how does it come together with these lifestyle changes that we've been speaking about? You know, people that have three burgers a day and drink lots of sugary drinks, how do the two come into play? Yes, then the high blood pressure already mentioned that it's already pushing pressure in the walls of the blood vessel. And then there are other contributors to the damage of the walls of the blood vessel. One, which is cholesterol. So biggest source, it is the incorrect food and incorrect diet. And then the second one would be things like cigarette smoking. Then those also contribute. And then uh, conditions like diabetes or, or even uh, the conditions that are before diabetes they can also contribute to the damage of the blood vessel. So those accelerate this damage to the blood vessel. So that, that's why it is important that when we look into this uh, syndrome, number one, not only just looking at the damage that it does, which is the complications, we also look at the other contributing factors that can uh, uh, affect the blood vessels. Mm. So it's very, 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 very crucial. So uh, unhealthy foods, it has to do with those cholesterols and diabetes and then uh, that end up causing the inflammation and damage of the blood vessel. Mm -hmm. We continue to take calls, and we've got Booty. Booty, good day. Thanks for your call. Bonge Baba, you think Booty, man? Yeah, Baba. Hypertension, Booty, does it cause ill and visual damage or not? Because in almost two months, man, I'm not sure how to do it. So, you think Booty, Booty, you have a high cost or not? Yeah, Bonge Baba. All right, Doc, a big one, and I think one that we need to highlight, the issue of complications. So let's talk about the complications of hypertension as a whole to answer Bhutti's question. Yes, so in the eyes, the blood vessels can get damaged, and then you can get blindness because of that. You know, it is almost similar to getting stroke, where it's a blood vessel that goes to the brain that gets damaged and then causes shortage of blood in the brain. Exactly the same phenomenon can happen in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in, in the eyes, and then also certain elements of the brain, if they're affected, they can also affect the vision as well. So, so, so it is true, it can have the link between the two. And then we've already spoken about the heart, we can get damage to the kidneys, where it can start from the mild kidney disease up until the end stage where somebody needs dialysis and those type of problems. Mm. You can get erectile dysfunction in men, it's a bit difficult at times whether diabetes, hypertension is the cause. Sometimes there are also other causes, which is why it's important for it to be assessed holistically. It is best done in men's clinic or with a urologist to be able to look at all the other things because there can be hormones that are involved in that. It can be age that is involved in that and other contributors, you know, not, not only high blood pressure, but it can also result in that. And then there can be uh, blood vessels to the legs can get aff affected uh, if the condition is not too bad, they can get cramps, which is what is called contraindication. 
and until it goes to the point where it changes the color of the leg, where the leg becomes black, and then that's called gangrene. That's normally where you see people who have been amputated and so on. So it is a blood vessel. This is just a question of where the blood vessel showed up best. Mm. You know, so that's, that's, that's the main thing. Mm. So can you sometimes find that a lot of patients that present are ones that present with the complications of having undiagnosed high blood pressure. So they'll come and go see the doctor saying, I'm having visual problems, I can't see, maybe I need to go get spectacles. And when they go see the optometrist, the optometrist tells them, well, look, uh, do you have high blood pressure? And the answer is always going to be no, because they don't know and they're undiagnosed with hypertension. So is it advisable for people after all, I mean, that exhaustive list that you've just gave us about the complications that do happen with high blood pressure, that the moment you think you have one of these two, three, four, five, six things, you go out and get your blood pressure measured? Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly the whole concept of, the, of this presentation, that they need to get. But at that point, one is the treatment is very crucial. Number two is that we need to know that we don't want people to get to that point. So please, we're not sending a message that somebody wait for a stroke or before you can be tested. Go and mm. get tested before that happens. Mm. An important thing to note, of course, um, and I think a big one that highlights why it's so important to do screening is how quick screening is for high blood pressure. It's non-invasive. The worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to press your arm, and that's just the machine, honestly, and that's the end of that. To continue our discussion, we have another caller. Mohale, good day. Thank you for joining us. Good day. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? I'm fine, man. I was diagnosed uh, in 2020, so now I'm on, on, I'm on medication. Mm. But now the problem is uh, like, and then kafila mm. So I don't know, again, what is the cause of this? We are going to but then maragili mo on medication. Sometimes I am saying, sometimes I am mostly I am saying. Okay, I am Doc, the issue of swollen feet and swollen legs says that he's been diagnosed with hypertension, is on treatment, but has this dizziness, has these swollen legs and sometimes headaches. Tell us more. What do you think is going on? All right. I think the first thing, hypertension is numbers. All right. We've got numbers that are high. We're bringing them under control, and we don't want to bring them too low because now that causes uh, the, the other symptoms that are, are as a result of the blood pressure that is too low. So number one, he needs to know his blood pressure. I like that patient who's got their own home blood pressure machine. They are checking, they are, they are correlating these things, and that is one thing that I always advise, that I always encourage. Then secondly, there are uh, blood, uh, blood pressure treatments that also causes uh, swelling, especially the calcium channel blocker. Somebody said they're on AMLOC. That's a calcium channel blocker. That's an example of, 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 of which it can cause swelling on the legs, and then the other complications of blood pressure as well. Uh, heart disease uh, can cause swelling, and then uh, also the kidney disease can cause swelling of the legs. So they need to check him for uh, the medications that he's on and also look for complications that he could be developing. So we need to be seen for that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for that one. We've got, I think, our last caller for the day for you, Doc. Elizabeth from the Northwest. Elizabeth, good day. What's your question? Good day. Uh, uh, okay, that's an important question. Thank you for that one, Elizabeth. The issue of missing medication. So, as doctors, I think we have a lot of this where, you know, we don't give patients... Uh, leeway with respect to missing their treatment. The moment they default once, it's a problem. So an honest one, and you know, patients are humans as well. Sometimes you forget, sometimes you didn't take the medications with you, you traveled and you didn't pack your medication. Can you double up on your medication if you've missed a dosage or you've missed the whole week, now you want to take all five tablets at the same time? How do we manage heart disease with respect to the medication? Yes, that is a very crucial uh, point. So now, with high blood pressure, what we want, we want to take it from up to normal and maintain the normal. So now, we don't want them to miss. That's, 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 that's point number one. We want to keep it normal. So if they skip the medication, there is no doubling that will happen. They must continue taking it and then uh, with, as, as prescribed. And then only over time, then we can be able to tell whether the blood pressure has been normalized or not. But we don't encourage missing missing doses for any reason unless it's instructed by the doctor. Mm. So they need to 
take it and continue to take it at the intervals that they are prescribed to be taken to be taken at. So that is what I would, because we don't want swings of blood pressure. You know, when it goes up and down, up and down, that is very damaging as well. Mm. Thank you for so much for that one, Doc, and I hope Elizabeth got her answer from that one. Please, you because I was talking for the past three days, but work on controlling your medication. Dr. Maya Yise, what is your take-home message with respect to hypertension? What should everyone watching the show today take home with them? Take home is, I think, everybody who's got a chance to listen to me, go get your blood pressure checked. You want it diagnosed early. You don't want to wait for symptoms or complications. You want it to be controlled. And then you want to take your medications. Don't skip. And then secondly, I think I'm a strong advocate for people to exercise, at least the exercise that is good for the heart, running, breastwalking, cycling, rowing, the ones that keep the heart beating for, for, for longer. That is what I will, I will also examine. Let's watch our diet. You know, the, 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 the fast food we can minimize. We can eat more fruits, we can eat more vegetables, and then we can also reduce our salt. And then let's cut down on alcohol. And then uh, the minimum required is you take one unit per day, which means if you take one can of beer or one glass of wine, don't wait for 20 days and then you say, today I'm catching up. There's no catch up. <laughs> it's one unit per day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc. There is no catching up. Do not play catch up when it comes to your alcohol drinking. And of course, all the other important notes highlighted by Dr. Maya Issa today. Thank you so much for our guests uh, coming on and of course, uh, educating us about the importance of hypertension, hypertensive heart disease, and why awareness screening and the bettering or rather improving your lifestyle choices is good for you and your health. An important take home, of course, being that you don't see that you've got hypertension. So go out and any opportunity that you have to get screened is one that you should take at the mall, at school, at at work, wherever it may be, the moment you see a blood pressure cuff, sit down, do it for five minutes and check your blood pressure so that you're not managing complications a little bit later on. Thank you for joining us. And of course, we'll see each other soon on another episode of Vital Signs.